Terrorist models and small-time drug dealers. 50 years ago today, Britain's Secretary of State for War, John Profumo, resigned following the affair. It laid bare corruption at the heart of the British establishment and helped bring down a government, as Nick Hyam now reports. It was 1963, the year the 60s properly began. The Beatles' career took off, and on newspaper front pages, a scandal played out from which the old Britain of establishment privilege never recovered. John Profumo was the Secretary of State for War and a glamorous Tory politician. He was publicly humiliated, retired from politics, and spent the rest of his life running a charity. Christine Keeler was a model and party girl who'd had an affair with Profumo two years earlier. Before the scandal broke, she tried to sell her story to the newspapers. One spirited her away to Spain. By the time she returned, the news had broken and she was mobbed at the airport. And Eugene Ivanov was a KGB spy at the Soviet Embassy in London, who'd also been seeing Keeler. Stephen Ward was the man who'd brought them all together, an amateur artist and society osteopath with a string of celebrity clients and a taste for pretty girls. They all feature in a new exhibition at the National Portrait Gallery, where the newspaper front pages are a reminder that the public couldn't get enough of the story. The country, as I can w well remember, was so excited by the opportunity to weed about people having better sex lives than they did and getting them punished for it and publicly ruined and pilloried. When the rumours about Profumo and Keeler and a Soviet spy were raised in the House of Commons in March 1963, the minister was summoned to a 3 a.m. meeting. The next day, he gave a statement to the House, denying there had been a breach of national security and denying he'd had an affair. That last bit was a lie. By May, his colleagues in government knew it was a lie. On the 5th of June, the rest of the country did too. The scandal was a gift to the new breed of satirists, including Private Eye, then just two years old, and it helped bring down the Conservative government of Harold Macmillan. The establishment needed a scapegoat for its humiliation and found one. Stephen Ward was tried on trumped-up charges of living off prostitutes and committed suicide. During his trial, Keeler's friend, Mandy Rice Davis, delivered the most famous line of the whole affair. She'd claimed a well-known peer had slept with her. He denied it, she was told. Well, he would say that, wouldn't he, she replied. Anne Leslie was a young reporter on the Daily Express at the time. I mean, it was the death blow to deferential attitudes. There was a settled feeling of what Britain was. Uh, the rich man in his castle, a poor man at his gate. Um, and the Profumo affair said, no, it's not like that at all. The scandal revealed the sleaze and hypocrisy at the heart of the establishment. Never before had newspapers been so bold. The press, at least, has never looked back. Nick Hyam, BBC News.